Hey guys, this is Kenjido and welcome to another MakeShot Pro video. Today we're going to make a very simple portrait using a text mask. Now this technique is most commonly used for portraits, at least as far as I've seen, but really it can be applied to any type of image. It's just a matter of how you want to apply text and have the original image come through. So let's get to it. So to start off, I have this portrait that I got from pexels.com. And what I want to do is separate the uh, male subject from the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate that layer. But whenever I'm using the background eraser, just to make sure that my edges are clean, I like to add another layer behind it and fill it with black. So then this way, when I'm on my layer that I'm trying to remove the background, it becomes a lot clearer if I need to go over a certain area a little bit more or if I need to change the softness um, the, or the sharpness value as I'm going along. Sometimes you get a little bit stray colors along the edge and the black background just helps you to see that and mitigate it while you're working. So now what we want to do is make our mask. And we can actually do that very simply in this case using vector graphics. So since I want half of the face to be fully visible and then the other half I want to have text, what I'm going to do is first start off with a rectangle. And this is the part that I want showing through. So as is standard with masks, the white portion is what is going to be visible. So I'm going to make this left half white. Next, I'm going to add my text tool. And then I'm going to start adding text. And the key here is obviously you want to know what kind of text you want to use. And you're going to want to create a vertical sort of shape that in some ways kind of mimics what the shape of the subject is that's going to be part of the mask. But you also want to pick a font that is going to allow as much of the subject that you want showing through. The skinnier the font, the less that's going to show through. The thicker the font, the more that's going to show through. So in my case, I want a little bit more to show through. So I'm going to use Arial Black. So once you have your text created, you'll want to arrange it so that it kind of fits the shape and size that you're looking for. And there's a few other aspects that I want to mention that kind of were automatically there in regards to shaping your text. Um, some key components are going to be found in this More Options button. And when you bring it up, there's, there's two key things. There's leading and there's kerning. So leading has very much to do with how much spacing is between the different lines vertically. So if I were to make this smaller, you'll see that it kind of smashes everything all in the same line. And if I were to make it bigger, it spreads everything out. What I found for this example is doing negative 0.4 gets me the level of spacing between the lines. Kerning is then just the spacing between the letters. And I wanted that space to be pretty tight. So again, going with a negative and that brings the letters together, a positive number would spread the letters apart. So now I have my left side being fully shown and then the right side is the text but since i want this to become a mask i need to fill all the rest of that space with black because black will block everything so then my final vector object is going to be a rectangle once again but black so then here i can draw that over this side but if i expand my vector object group i want to actually move the black to the bottom so that it's behind the text So now I have my vector grouping, which is going to be the source for my mask. So what I want to do is select the copy of my background, which is the isolated man's head. And then I can say mask from image. And since this is the only image I have, it's showing here. And I want source luminance. And I hit OK. So now that I've created that mask, I can disable my example one. And then what you'll see is 
if I were to turn this black on, for example, you'll see the mask coming into play. So we have the face fully showing on this side, and we have the masked picture of the face on the right where the letters are. However, what we want to do is have that mask kind of show through with the background instead of this black showing up. But since I don't have anything that's different between the mask layer and the background, that's why we can't see its effect. So what I want to do is I actually want to take this background region right here and make it kind of seemingly behind where the text is. And we can use cloning, we can use all kinds of different tools, um, but just because I can kind of get away with it and I'm not too concerned with the fidelity of it, I'm actually just going to take, take a portion of this area here and then select the background because that's what I want to copy. Copy it and then paste it as a new layer. And so now you can already see that it, this little rectangle piece that I created is having an effect on where the masked region is. So I'm going to disable that selection. I have this layer selected, that copy that I made, and then I can just take that object and then expand it And so now what I have is something that looks more of like an effect of you have the face and then you have the letters that are masking the rest of the side of the face and then you just have what seemingly at least looks like the remainder of the background. So this was another example of a image project where there were a lot of temporary layers created for the sake of getting to the final goal. So the quick summary of um, what really is all necessary by the time you've completed all the different layers and all the steps is that you have a group which has a mask, which is based on the text and allowing the left side to show through, and the background erased version of the subject. And that's what allows us to have this sort of seamless line here that doesn't show the original background that wasn't the modified one, which is on this layer. And then at the very bottom, we have the background, which is the original image, and really all that supplies in this whole example is just that background side. And that's it. So I'll admit that this particular image and uh, implementation of this technique is probably a little bit less inspiring than other examples that have come up, but uh, inspiration I'll leave to you. This is really essentially just the technique of being able to create sort of like a portrait-shaped mask using text. Anyway, if you have any questions or you'd like to suggest new content, feel free to leave a comment. If you would like updates of new content, feel free to subscribe. And if you'd like to support me, go ahead and check out the Patreon page that I've set up on the link shown on the TV. And I'll see you guys next time.